Good afternoon and welcome to this special broadcast. My name is Vuyom Vogo. This broadcast, of course, brought to you by SABC News. This afternoon, we're coming to you live from the University of KwaZulu-Natal in Deben, and this being the fourth in the series of lectures that uh, the ANC has been having in honor of uh, its past presidents as part of the 100 years uh, anniversary celebrations. Well, this afternoon, of course, President Jacob Zuma will be giving the lecture in honor of uh, uh, the fourth president of the ANC, uh, Josiah uh, Kumede. And of course, once uh, uh, the president does that, uh, other festivities here in the province of KwaZulu Natal and elsewhere in the country will also kick in. Before, of course, we continue with this program, uh, let's give you a bit of a background um, in terms of um, the life and times of uh, uh, Josiah Komede. But uh, before we do that, I must tell you that this broadcast is going to continue for about an hour and a half, and that is where you will get more information about the life of uh, this hero. Well, let's go to that insert prepared for us by our executive producer, Dewoko Alexander. <laughs> A red tide, whose much debated influence on South Africa's political landscape is generally traced back to Josiah Kumete, who presided over the African National Congress's first swing to the left in the late 20s. We know and historians agree that uh, J.T. Kumete was the first radical ANC president. The one that realized that the ANC needs to forge partnerships with the, the trade unionists, need to forge partnerships with the communists. It began with the 1927 Belgian trip with communist James Laguma on the left and trade union rep D. Coldrain right to the first League Against Imperialism Congress. There he expressed his view on why the oppressed supported the communists. From Brussels, Gumete and Laguma went to Germany, bringing the story of South Africa's segregation to many Berliners for the first time. Then it was on to the Soviet Union for the 10th anniversary of the October Revolution, where he also took time to visit Georgia. He had an opportunity to meet with the then leader, the ruler of, of uh, Russia, Joseph Stalin, and his, uh, Russian historians has it, have it that uh, the two of them uh, discussed politics in Africa and in particular South Africa to such an extent that uh, Kumede enlightened Joseph Stalin about the plight and the struggle of black people for liberation in South Africa. Kumede left the country a nationalist and returned a Marxist. One chief questioned communism asking if they, of royal blood, would be treated any different by the communist than the Tsar was. Gumede's left turn was a short one. This antagonism against communism cost him the presidency. Gumede hails from Bergville, west of Durban. Early on, he found himself representing first Zulu and then these Sutu chiefs, with whom he went to London in the first of many trips to appeal for land taken by Orange Free State Afrikaners. Father of United Democratic Front founder Archie Gumete, Josiah Gumete died in 1946, leaving a legacy of formalizing the ANC's relationship with socialists intact, one that has been passed down by subsequent ANC leaders from Albert Lutuli through to Oliver Tambo, essentially reminding critics that communists have never ignored the plight of South Africans' oppressed masses. Well, that insert prepared for us by Tebuho Alexander. Well, if you've just joined us, we're watching a live broadcast. We're coming to you live from the University of KwaZulu-Natal in Durban. This being the fourth in the lecture series that uh, the ANC has been hosting in honor of their past presidents, but also as part of the celebrations of a hundred years of the political party's existence. Well, 
Uh, right now, uh, inside the hall, the, the various uh, ministers of religion, the religious community is uh, uh, busy uh, doing tributes, by doing, uh, conducting prayers. And this, of course, is, uh, uh, marks the start of uh, today's proceedings. President Jacob Zuma will be delivering this, uh, le- the lecture this time around. Uh, but uh, earlier... I spoke to one of the family members, the granddaughter uh, of uh, Josiah Kumede. Granddaughter Agababu Kumede, Umama Ututsi, Margaret Masinga. Mama Masinga, Ugubalana, I tell you what you need as a family. Sichabulega kulu ubuti sinati sibeko na gulum kupoga mkulu. Sichabulesi and Zela, and all by young Kelemia Gabes Logo, Sipatega, Buti Astabens Agangaga, why Bim Koshi, because they never mentioned him all along from that from the release of Mandel, they never ever mentioned him. But Nam Sanjing over Nagu Segwenzega, Sia Bongas. Stina bagua mungu ni bagua kondo baga paga tuai. Mwa bagua guli kwa elukulu le umkuluwe. Umani ngumde ni uma wako ubeze ati ni uma ekuluma ngobabu kume. Uma ma ebe kuluma kuku ngobaba wake ngobavele she was the favorite. Ei enguma fungwa se ei first born. In so much. When he passed away in 1946, I remember Mila, I was staying in Bedville. She came crying. But I had no time to tell my husband. I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital. I was Ugu found a way to ANC, history, ABC, Tola, Gukoko, Nitola, Nagui. Uguti babe bamba eke itini na woti ni zulu. Epe vile makwa kwa sinu. Ya zepe vile kutkunja. Ya sese makayeni kayeni. But just because ama puno enga kwa zuku figa labu. Ya wana abatole. Ebe ibambe la panskwe slasa imiti. And then gulula ipasi pulmen. My Julie Pullman, my Sayale Uko Kuzo, Sale Pega, Badle, 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 my Buya, a Quelly Pullman, Baham, Batri Tech. Now, as a family, Oman Kuluman Engan as a Sakai, Nifuna Babe, the example of what Obabuku uh, made was Niti, Niguzo Engan. Man Kuluman was Gulubam. I always tell them, we are a caller, we are a caller, but 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 we are a caller, in so much gang in Ababa Zugu Abaye Babuya Echemeni, we have been in Koto Sizwe Abanye Namanjo Munu said it needs a hot house. Bapi, but it's Funuland, La Eta to win Zak. And I am happy about that. Since Benza Leon to Baba Lega Lucho Aleluxi, I born is Catalis. So indeed, this is a proud moment for the family. And we are happy that at last. At last, he is recognized. Mama Ututsi Margaret Masinga, who is the granddaughter of Josiah 
Changana Kumedia, who is being honored this afternoon. The lecture being given, going to be given by President Jacob Zuma in, on his behalf, on his, in his capacity as the president of the African National Congress. Well, if you have just joined us, you're watching a live broadcast. We're coming to you from the University of KwaZulu-Natal here in Deben, and this is where President Jacob Zuma will be delivering this lecture in honor of... Uh, uh, Josiah Kumede. Well, let's go inside where Sihle Zigalala, who's the provincial secretary of the ANC in KwaZulu Natal, is making some remarks and will give us a sense of what is going to follow. The PEC member, Comrade Nongeba Kochiwe, I will request all of them to rise up. Viva Eastern Cape, Viva! We also wish to appreciate and acknowledge the presence of Abantuana Basenjunkulu, Abakona, Pagatwetu, Gogwe Zindu Zonke, Ezkona, Siabashonipa, Abantuana Basenjunkulu. Gapande Gutitis Kati, we will proceed to the next item and we will call upon the Vice Chancellor, Professor Mahoba to come and present the welcoming remarks on behalf of the University of KwaZulu-Natal uh, to this occasion, to this lecture. Professor Mahoba. Uh, program Director, the President of the African National Congress and the Republic of South Africa, the Honorable Jacob Kedlesegi Sazuma, the National Chairperson of the African National Congress, Balegambete, the National Officials of the African National Congress, the National Executive Council of the African National Congress, the Chairperson of the Province of KwaZulu-Natal, and the Premier, Zuelim Kise, and the Chancellor of the University of KwaZulu-Natal, the Josiah Gumede family, the Limbede, Pixli Kaseme, Dube, and Lutuli families that are here, the Amakosis, the national and provincial ministers and regional leadership of our country, the mayor of Itequini, and the academic leaders and members of the academic community of the University of KwaZulu-Natal and other institutions of higher learning that are located here. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to welcome you, Mr. President, to the University of KwaZulu-Natal on this momentous occasion to celebrate the life of a great and distinguished uh, South African, President General Josiah Changani Kumede, a son of this province. It is my privilege also to welcome members of the Josiah family and other former presidents of the ANC and their families, ministers and mayors and distinguished guests here this afternoon. Today's occasion is also a reflection of the founding principles that guided the African National Congress on 100 years ago the ideals of justice, equality, opportunities for all, and above all, human dignity. Your Excellency, President Zuma, the African National Congress, you have given us human dignity to rise above the shackles of apartheid and to live and strive for greatness in a free democratic society. The intent of sincerity in those founding principles lay at the heart of Josiah Gumedes unwavering commitment to succeed in the cruel face of adversity. Of course, the University of KwaZulu-Natal is integral and at time was at the forefront of this struggle. The late Steve Bantubiko was a medical student here during our time. He formed the South African Students' Organization and developed the movement that is now known as Black Consciousness. Of course, at the time, he and uh, Professor Bani Bichana coined the phrase, black man, you are on your own. And we loved that statement, that we were black people on our own, championing our dignity and moving towards freedom. I also remember vividly how Dr. Ralph Mugijima, I think he's now in the, uh, in the government, left at the back door of a class in our final year medical uh, school times and how the likes of Ngozazana were harassed and they had to leave the country. And I can also remember uh, Minister Jeff Radebe 
on one day at 2.15 p.m. opposite Cuthbert's on West Street, how he bid me farewell because he was leaving the country. So the nature of the struggle of the time and how we were involved at times was exciting, painful, but we never thought we would be where we are today. Of course, on the Howard College campus, there was the late Rick Turner, who was also a friend, a close friend of uh, Steve Biko, and he championed the philosophy of radical political change through peaceful means. You all know he suffered and got assassinated in 1978 for his ideals. However, we live in this free democracy that we take for granted. We live with this organization that is celebrating 100 years today, and we are here to honor one of its uh, founders and one of its heroes. No one, I think, in this university will pardon me if I don't mention the name of Fatima Mia, a struggle hero who fought for freedom, who taught most of us, but more importantly, he taught most of us to find our identity, to fight for our freedom, and to be ourselves in our own country. His Excellency, I once again want to welcome you to this university. I want you to adopt it as your home because I suspect that it may have a lot to play with your future and the future of the country. I want to close this welcome address by a quotation from Steve Biko. And it says, women must be at the forefront of nation building to bring South African citizenry together and therefore develop a whole new ethos of human coexistence and human dignity. I am proud to say that here at the university we are doing that. Mr. President, you are welcome. You are amongst friends. We are here to celebrate a great South African that has created the society we are in, and the stage is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Siabonga. Thank you, Professor Mahoba, with such warm words, welcoming us to this institution, but also giving us and outlining the connection, the historical relationship of this institution with the struggle of liberation of our country. We thank you, Professor Mahoba. Comrades, let me also take this opportunity before I call upon the next speaker to acknowledge and welcome family members of Amangamalala, the family members of the President Zuma family who are here with us today. And we will also request them, because they are here, just to stand up so that we will appreciate and acknowledge their presence. Uh, family members, Agwangamalala, uh, are here with us. Siabonga. Without further ado, let me take this opportunity to introduce the provincial chairperson of the ANC, who will come here and outline the purpose of this event and also acknowledge some other dignitaries who are with us, Comrade Kavazel. Manda. Comrade the program director, His Excellency President J.G. Zuma, the President of the Republic of South Africa, President of the African National Congress, the Honorable uh, National Chairperson of the ANC, Comrade Balega Mbete, members of the National Executive Committee of the ANC present, and ministers of national government, the leadership of the ANC in the province, in the province of KwaZulu Natal, and all the structures of the ANC, the regional structures, and the members of the alliance, Comrade Chairperson, and the leadership of the ANC, 
in the Eastern Cape and comrades from various other provinces who are present here, members of the diplomatic and ambassadorial corps present with us, the families of our struggle stalwarts and veterans who are here with us, the Dube family, the Seme family, the Zuma family, um, the Lambete family, the Seme family, and the Lutuli family, and all other members of the heroes of our struggle, the veterans who are amongst us, the members of the MKMVA, Amakosi, members of the legislatures, MECs, mayors, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome President Zuma, who has come to deliver a special lecture on the lives of the president, the fourth president of the African National Congress, Josiah Changana Kumede, who this month we are honoring. And we want to thank you all for being here with us. This month we have the um, centenary flame, which is celebrating the 100 years of the ANC. It has moved around in many regions, and we must say, President, that this centenary torch is reviving the spirit of the ANC and its values in a, in a, in a manner that we would not have considered uh, would be as effective as it's doing. It raises a lot of emotions as we go through the memories of the events that took place over the 100 years, as well as the number of heroes who have, whose lives who lost their lives in the struggle, and we therefore want to say that it was indeed a very noble idea to have this centenary torch visiting all the provinces and touching so many lives and so many communities, churches, and different uh, communities, religious groups. We have found it to be quite a very strong inspiration. We therefore want to welcome you to say that... Uh, we are looking forward to the lecture that you will be delivering today and we want to acknowledge all the religious leaders who have been here to give us their prayers but also those who have received our centenary torch in the different parts of the province be they uh, you know, uh, Muslim or Christian or, or different other uh, 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 denominations and, and faiths we want to thank them for the inclusive nature that this torch has been able to revive that ideal of a non-racial South Africa. At this point, therefore, I do want to bid you all welcome uh, and want to thank the uh, Vice Chancellor for the very warm words of welcome uh, as he welcomes our President to this institution. And uh, we hope you will enjoy the evening and thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Comrade Chaperson, uh, for such words outlining the purpose of this gathering. It is an honor, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you a member of Kumete family who will present the message on behalf of the Kumete family. Members of Kumete family are known to this revolution. The fourth president is not the only member who came and led our revolution, but also Comrade Archie Kumete led and provided quality leadership to many of us who are here today. Without wasting any time, let me call upon a member of the African National Congress and a member of National Parliament, Comrade Don Kumete, to speak on behalf of Kumete family. Comrade Don. Mr. MC, the Honorable President, His Excellency, Mr. Zuma, our national Chairperson, 
our national office bearers that are present here, our NEC members, the chairperson of the province, Comrade Zweli Nkize, and your executive, the REC members, the chairpersons, secretaries, and all ANC members present here. I greet you together with our alliance partners, COSATU, SANCO, and the SACP, which has been, had been at the heart of our grandfather, Josiah Changana Kumede's desires. Standing here, let me first tell you the origins of Ubaba Uchosaya Changana Kumete. Ubaba Uchosaya Changana Kumete kwa wu indotana ka choni. Uchoni indotana ka makunga. Umakunga indotana ka vizi. Uvizi indotana ka pagatwa. Pagatwa indotana ka kontro. Kuyepe zulu kegu zekfige kumguni. Gako mangi kuluma ngali kawe ngi kuluma ngi kawe ela keta ugiega uguningi la keta uguti lingene emzabalazweni la keta uguti uguningi emdenini walo ligtate ligubege emzabalazweni wabandu ngani ngoba abandu lalba katalele ngani ngoba abandu lalba tanda. Ubaba umkulu wae shate na makoska za mabili. Umastole, bese guba umama ulilien umdaka mkokoza. Kubabe nabantu anage kiyo na lemdeni. Kumdeni ka mama umastole wazibula gosisi u pitris o walandelua u Tabita, Owalandelwa, Uma, 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 Uma Kret, Guse, O Harriet, Vese Kuba, Edward, Kanye, No Kilbet, Abanyo Abanduana Babo, Abakona Lapa, Vese Guti Kumama, O Koko Ulilien, Wazibula, Go Anti, Ongazangi Astole, Iskatso Pilis Kateside, Kweza ubaba, ubaba uachi, wabu yena, ukala ima tutanini, uwalandelua ubaba mnani, ubaba meicha, uwalandelua ubaba unusa, uwalandelua umama uolifu. Oktua uazua ngushimbi, mese kuba ubaba unishina. Kushukuti, bati ubaba, Nkulu, wae umundu onge naso iskati sabandu abatitizayo. <laughs> wae nge naso iskati sabandu abangazba funani. Wae ti uma utitiza, gokusho kukababa, baba, ati ubaba wangchela uguti umkonto we kwala upelela AJ Oguguti equal a logo litting gizo gizo logo liwala maplan gama plan gama plan liu lolum tondo swash mkondo swashazela rapa swashazela rapa so come on rapa come with me and rapa long full and out to in king when in king one is this way cool gale wang and aso is salab manga is a two way we are viva pambini why it Waibuzguti kanjani nini. Uba mkuluge wae umuntu wa matalenta ama nini. Wae utisha. Wae umkuli. Kukuswa kwe tuke. Gaba sizalae. Wae gate ilala upiano. Wae gate e umkuli. Wumpagati, 
imiphakathi ehlukene imiphakathi esebenza njengenduna kanti futhi wayebuye esebenzane namakhosi abeswe ngale sosikhathi wabuye waba umeluleki wesilo udini zulu kanti futhi wayekade a journalist wayekade futhi ethengisa ngumhlaba ebroka ngomhlaba Len Broka kanti futhi kanti futhi wawo wayo usoma politiki osezingeni eliphezulu ekwazisa ukuthi amandla embuthweni elwela inkululeko abalulekile ngaphezu kokubuciko bokukhuluma waye kade eyikholo kanti futhi waye wahlonipha amasiko esintu emzini yakhe ujehova ungumalusi kwakuyihubo elikhutshwa zonke izinsuku ebusuku ekwakuyihubo engethemba ukuthi kwakuyilona elalimenza abe nofuqufuqu namandla nesibindi aye naso ngaleso sikhathi okunye ke sasikhuzwa ngaye kwaba kwakuba ukuthi ngesikhathi sempi yamangisi namaqadas yasuka ngo 1898 yaza yaphela ngo 2002 kuyona yena awaye ingxenye yayo njenge scout ivulandlela wayethi amabhunu aye namasosha aye namahashi aye qeqeshwe ngalolu hlobo lolu elalithi uma limile ihashi ukuthi noma ngakukhuma inhlamvu lithule lithinya ngicela umsizo wodwa nobhane lithule lithinya so kanti futhi kule mpile kwaba uyena owasuka emnambithi waya ethekwini eyotshela amangisi ukuthi amabhunu awavalele awacindezele uyena owenza ukuthi amangisi asuke ethekwini aye emnambithi ayodedela amanye kodwa ke ngisimanga sokuthi isikhathi siye sa 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 sanqishiswa angisezugqila kokuningi kodwa amangisho ukuthi ziningi izifundo umndeni owazifunda kule ndoda yebo yena wayengenaso isikhathi esiningi nemindeni yakhe kodwa siyazi ukuthi waye ubaba onakekelayo he was a caring father waye ubaba ozwanayo noma akhelwane bakhe ukushuka baba waye ubaba waye uwazisa umndeni kodwa enomusa kakhulu ngendlela yokuthi walahlekelwa izinto eyiningi imali eningi kweletela abantu ababehluphekile abangakwazanga ukuthi bamkhokhele imali so kodwa ke we shall be having very very fond memories of him as a great leader as a brave leader and as one who made a difference in our long struggle from 1912 up to when we could be able to light this flame under freedom freedom in our time i thank you amarja let's give him the round hands of applause and thank the presentation of that message on behalf of the family nguni yeye ye phakathwayo ngiyakuthanda kabi ngobu 1 minute wakho ba 1 minute eh uh, without wasting any time i will now call upon the national chairperson of the anc comrade bale kambete who is well known to all of us one of those who have inspired many of us through her leadership qualities 
and her resilience in the struggle for freedom. Comrade Bale Gambete, the national chairperson of the ANC, she will introduce the president. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Sihle. Uh, without further waste of time, I'll just very quickly go through my notes by way of presenting someone who really needs no introduction. Comrade Jacob Zuma has been honored with being the president to preside over the celebration of the centenary of the ANC. It is under Comrade Jacob Zuma's leadership that all the families of past and, you know, late presidents have been invited so that they are on board and they begin to feel that the ANC is their home. Today, many of them are here. Comrade Jacob Zuma is one of the leaders and cadres who have seen a lot, who have been tried and tested, and actually continues to be tried and tested. In his own personal life, when he grew up, he was telling us at, the, at one of the birthday presents, uh, 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 parties, how he had to educate himself, and today he is a head of state. He takes his place among others in the whole world. He is one of the most exemplary leaders and cadres I have ever come across in the manner in which he is very accessible. To a fault, by the way. Very accessible. His phone number is available to all South Africans and he responds to it himself. <laughs> Lastly, he is one comrade who appreciates the strengths of other people. He recognizes that which is good in other people and he concentrates on those positive attributes of other human beings rather than the negative. I present to you Comrade President Zuma to address you in this lecture. Thank you. Thank you, comrades. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. A director of the program, before I say my remarks, just allow me to uh, say something to some of my friends which I think is important to do because we, we often don't get the opportunity to do so. This morning we started our program in Peter Marisberg by visiting the grave of our leader, President Josiah Gomade. And at some point, the <clears throat> director of the program now was singing different songs, and he sang one song which says, Hambagashe Mkonto, and said, Tinabandubo Mkonto, Sizmisele Ugubuisana, 
na ulama po <laughs> and then the national chairperson who came to the podium said one day I tried to stop comrades from saying the normal song Tina and said the message of Buisana and the comrades nearly skinned me alive. <laughs> so when I came in and I, I, I made a small comment which I said politically speaking and placed the position of the ANC in society with regard to this song and the last portion of it and said maybe we need to talk about it this song and suddenly I'm listening to the radio and I'm told Zuma has opened a debate on the freedom songs <laughs> now I'm giving this because it's very important how from time to time we complain that we are misinterpreted by those who talk to the nation. I discuss about this song, not the whole song, just the last part, and I explained why. And I hear the headlines, I've opened a debate on the freedom songs. I thought it was unfair. Instead of reporting what happened, they report their own thing. I just thought I should make the point because as we speak here, we might end up with wrong headlines on what we say. <clears throat> I think it is important that we should all be responsible and particularly those who have access to talk to people. I thought I should make that point, director of the program, because to me, <clears throat> it is important that uh, we tell the story as it is. Director of the program, thank you for the opportunity. The Kumete family, the national chairperson of the ANC, members of the National Executive Committee of the ANC, ANC provincial chairperson of the province, the provincial leadership of the ANC, the ANC Women's League, the ANC Youth League, the ANC Veterans League, and the MKMVA, the Alliance Leadership, family members of all former presidents of the ANC who are with us here, who have been introduced members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Vice-Chancellor of the UK ZN, traditional leaders, religious leaders, comrades and friends, distinguished guests. Good afternoon, Sanbona Ninonke. We meet here today during the most important month in the history of our country, the month of April, which also happens to be a freedom month. When we celebrate the birth of democracy and freedom in South Africa and also honor heroes and heroines of our country who made our freedom possible. During this month, we also celebrate, salute, and honor the memories of our heroes, Oliver Tambo, Chris Hani, and Solomon Mashangu, who all passed away during 
the month of April. Without their contributions, sacrifices and courage, we will not be enjoying the freedom that we have today. We also honor all unsung heroes and heroines of our struggle and millions of ordinary people who through their struggles ensured that we gained our freedom. The ANC took a decision last year to hold memorial lectures on each of his presidents as part of the centenary celebrations. The decision was taken because ANC presidents and the collectives they led represent a particular era or epoch in the history of the movement and the country. We also added, however, that we would also celebrate the ANC centenary through holding lectures on other ANC leaders who were not necessarily presidents or office bearers, but who played a distinguished role in the struggle for our liberation. We are happy to join you today as we reflect on the life of Josiah Changana Kumede, the fourth president of the ANC. President Kumete's life is a typical depiction of the adage that revolutionaries are not born but are produced by the struggle. His views, political philosophy, and ideological development were shaped by his experiences in the quest for freedom, liberty, and justice. Josiah Changa Nakumede is better known as the ANC president who consciously led the national movement closer to the working class organizations. The Communist Party of South Africa, now the South African Communist Party, and the labor movement during his national presidency from 1927 to 1930. He also decided to actively promote the formation of an alliance between the ANC and the Communist Party before his election into its presidency in 1927. He was a man who was far ahead of his time politically and organizationally. His remarkable contributions to the liberation struggle lasted more than five decades. During that period, he distinguished himself as an outspoken champion of the oppressed and exploited working people of South Africa. President Josiah Kumete was born on the 9th October 1867 in Hilltown in Fort Beaufort in the eastern, in the Cape Colony, now known as the Eastern Cape. His father, J. 
John Chakana Kumede was the descendant of Kondro, the father of Pagatwai, the Nkosi of the Kwabe people, who was defeated by King Shaga during the latter's early days as king of the Zulus. His forebears had reached the Eastern Cape as a result of the so-called Mfetane Wars and had become converts into Christianity or Amakolo. As a result of which, Gumete received education in Hilton, a Wesleyan mission. He inherited an entrepreneurial spirit from his father, who had started a transport business in Grahamstown. His outstanding academic achievements earned him scholarships. He studied at the prestigious Malins Institute, an African wing of the St. Andrews College in Grahamstown, and at the famous Lovedale College in Hilltown for his teaching training. He was an outstanding teacher and taught in Somerset East, in the Eastern Cape, and later in Adams College in Natal. He was also a keen and talented musician who led a Zulu choir on a tour of Europe in 1892. The entourage regarded themselves as civilized subjects of the crown. However, they were disappointed by their exposure to racial and color prejudices in London, where contemptuous local newspapers referred to the choir as talked kafirs. This was the beginning of disillusionment that led to Gumede's determination to fight against colonial domination. President Gumede's travel abroad effectively ended his teaching career. He began to dedicate his time to fighting colonial repression as it affected the Zulu kingdom, as he was seriously affected by the injustices meted by the secular communities against the Zulu royal family and local communities. The Zulu royal family had been under siege for almost two decades since the invasion of the Zulu kingdom in 1879 and its subsequent destruction from the 1880s onwards. President Kumete began to act as a negotiator and advisor to King Dinizulu against illegal land encroachment by the Boers in their quest for creating a seaport for the 
Transvaal Boer Republic via St. Lucia. Instead of giving any support, the British moved to annex whatever remained of Zululand to bolster their own position. No progress was made in those negotiations. Later, President Kumete went to settle in Beckville, where he fought on behalf of the local traditional leaders and their people against an oppressive magistrate, an oppressive magistrate system designed by Theophilus Shepston to divide and rule the native population. Shepson was called Usomseu Kasonzika by the Zulus. Like many Africans at the time, President Kumete believed himself to be a loyal subject of the British crown. In this regard, he joined the British soldiers during the Anglo-Boer War as a commander of the non-combatant trekkers consisting largely of scouts drafted from local Basutu and Zulu convert communities. On retirement, Gumede and the fellow scouts or intelligence officers were disappointed by discrimination displayed against them. The rewards promised by the British colonial office, including the restoration of land for dispossessed communities were not honored. Family sources of Kumede insist that it was Kumede who, as chief of scouts disguised in Imvunulo, slipped undetected behind the Boer soldiers behind their lines on foot and was able to alert the British office in Durban of the siege in Ladysmith during the Anglo-Boer War. This resulted in the arrival of reinforcements by the relief that relieved the British forces that were encircled in Ladysmith. Despite this, all efforts to seek recognition from British authorities for their role in that war came to naught. These are some of the experiences that shaped the life of the young Josiah Kumede, making him to realize never to take the colonialists at their word. The deepening political oppression and economic exploitation of the working people in the immediate aftermath of the mineral revolution in southern Africa convinced President Kumede that he should quit teaching and devote his time to the struggle on a full-time basis. He was a student of history and he learned that 
a different strategy was needed to pursue the fight against colonial oppression, land dispossession, and racial prejudice. The centrality of the authority of kings and traditional leadership structures in preserving the sovereignty and defending our people against colonial oppression had been irreversibly and permanently undermined. In 1899, Josiah Kumede Martin Lutuli, Saul Msane, and Harriet Colenso met and discussed the need to form a modern African political organization. Its primary objective was to be the defense of the Zulu royal family in general and to fight against the denial of human freedom and dignity to the African people in particular. The meeting took place against the background of the trial and conviction of Prince Ndabuko and Prince Shingana Kampande, as well as King Dinizulu Katajwayo at Eshoe a decade earlier on the 27th April 1889. They were sentenced to serve prison terms at St. Helena from 1889 to 1898. This marked the beginning of an attack on the dignity and the position of King Dinizul, which culminated in his second imprisonment for the Pambata Rebellion, now called Pambata War, of 1906. The, spring, the stripping of his kingship and his banishment to Middleburg, where he ultimately died in 1913. The national native, the Natal Native National Congress was formed in 1901 to fight for human freedom and justice and the restoration of the dignity of the African people who were continuously dehumanized in the face of rapidly expanding imperial domination, oppression, and exploitation. Josiah Gumete served both as the secretary and deputy president of the NNNC, that is the Natal Native National Congress, while Martin Tully and Saul Mkana among others, served as of print media to directly engage them in any serious dialogue. Josiah Gumed was a journalist and regular columnist who was persuasive on debate and outstanding orator. As a result of this, President Gumete, like President John Dube, served as editor of the Ilanga, La Senatali, and Batu, and Abatu Batu newspapers. The highly active President Josiah Gumete also played a prominent role 
in the South African Native Convention, which black political leaders formed in 1909 in response to the formation of the whites-only South African Convention two years earlier in 1907. The whites only convention laid the foundations upon which the South African black majority would be denied citizenship when the Africana and English came together to form a racist union of South Africa in 1910. And around that time, Pigs Liga Izaga Seme made the historic call for all our people to unite and defeat the demon of tribalism. This led to the meeting in Mangawung in 1912 where the South African Native National Congress was formed with John Langalibalele Dube as the first president. Josiah Kumede was elected into the National Executive Committee of the organization from its formation in 1912 and served in his structures until 1930. He engaged in numerous campaigns such as the 1913 Native Land Act, which had squeezed more than 80% of the black population into about 10% of the land. Because of, his, because of the disastrous failure of the deputation he led to London in 1906, to assist the Basutu kings, President Kumete opposed the decision for another deputation to be sent to Britain in 1914, led by Dr. John Dube, to protest against the 1913 Land Act, which was a failure as he predicted. However, in 1919, Together with Sol Plachi, Kumete was persuaded by Congress to be part of the ANC delegation to Britain. The purpose was to petition the British king against the Land Act, Native Administration Bill, the Native Urban Areas Bill, the disenchantment of the Africans and the past laws. During the first and extensive network of contacts was built during their visit with sympathetic and influential figures including members of the British Labour Party, African intellectuals, and nationalist leaders from the West Africa in British and French colonies as well as the African diaspora. They also attended the International Brotherhood Congress convened to generate support for ideas embodied in the League of Nations. During this trip, the delegation managed to hold meetings with the Archbishop of Canterbury and Lloyd George, the British Prime Minister at the time. They hoped to persuade the British to see reason and switch their support from the white minority regime to the broad black majority in South Africa. Again, the British failed 
to treat African grievances with the seriousness they deserved. This turned President Kumede into one of the most radical critics of British imperialism in particular and Western imperialism in general by the end of the 1920s. A report was tabled to the disappointed ANC then led by President Sifaku Mahatu. On his return from the London trip, President Kumete made contact with King Solomon Gatinizul and helped him with the formation of the Inkata Cultural Movement in 1921. Inkata was reintroduced in the 1970s and later it became Inkata Freedom Party. President Kumede became a vocal and regular critic of the policies of settler John settler John Smart's regime debating in the media and ANC platforms at times differing with some in the ANC leadership on the best strategy to pursue. He was elected president of the ANC in Natal at a conference held in Escort on the 16th of April 1924. He held the position until 1927. The collective he led included leaders such as Alexander Maduna, who was known for radical ideas and fiery speeches signaling a departure from a reconciliatory approach of the ANC at the time. The new leadership took a conscious decision to market itself as the champions of a common people as opposed to their predecessors who were portrayed as having catered mainly for the interests of the African lower middle classes. One way of expressing this solidarity with the working people was by insisting that all meetings should be conducted in the African languages. For an example, this is Zulu in Natal. The Natal leadership of the ANC announced shortly after its election that it would work closely with the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, and with the Inkata Cultural Movement of the time. Sizwagash. Not the Anam <laughs> that was Kashara. <laughs> President Kumete invited Clement Gadali, who was a leader of the ICU, to open up the Industrial Commercial Union in Natal and started working very closely with AWG champion. He had been influenced by the Labour Party during his travel abroad. This era saw increased Labour activities in the Gold Reef and protest activities against Herzog taxation policies and oppressive laws spreading to Natal Colony. President Kumete
traveled all over the country reporting about his travel and criticizing the oppressive policies and agitated for action in ANC meetings. He had realized as early as in 1920s that mass mobilization and proper organization rather than deputations and petitions were the most appropriate path to follow in cause of the struggle for freedom and justice. He was also quick to grasp the importance of the African working class as part of the motive forces in the struggle for freedom, human dignity, and justice. It therefore comes as no surprise that he actively participated in the encouraging the African mine workers strike on the land in the early 1920s period. In 1927, the ANC had lost all faith in the British government when President Z.R. Mahaban stated in ANC meeting held in Plumfontein in January 1927 that, and I quote, the significance of the Balfour Declaration is that we can no longer turn to British Parliament with our grievances against the Union Parliament, unquote. The era of delegations and deputations had ended. In his capacity as the deputy president of the ANC and his Natal president, President Kumete accompanied James A. Lagoma, a CAPE member of the ANC and member of the Communist Party of South Africa, and D. Colrain of the South African Trade Union Congress to the inaugural Congress of the League Against Imperialism held in Brussels in Belgium from the 10th to the 15th of February 1927. He was thoroughly impressed by the support that the communist delegates to this Congress gave to the colonial, to the colonized peoples in various parts of the world. This convinced him that communists could become valuable, line, valuable allies in the liberation struggle in South Africa. In an address he made in Brussels, Kumete had this to say, and I quote, I am happy to say that there are communists in South Africa. I myself am not one, but it is my experience that it is the Communist Party that stands behind us and from which we can expect something. We know there are now two powers at work, imperialism and the workers' republic in Russia. We hear little about the latter, although we would like to know more about it, but we take interest and will soon find out who we have to ally ourselves with." Unquote. 
President Kumete's experience in struggle had changed his views from his earlier critical statements about communists. Like other conservatives within the ANC, he had been skeptical about communists. From Brussels, the South African delegation went to Berlin in Germany, where they again addressed many rallies organized by the German Communist Party. They used this platform to generate support for the cause and were emboldened by the support of the international community. On return, President Kumete started encouraging a closer working relationship with the Communist Party of South Africa and agitated for militancy in challenging the oppressive laws, though President Mahaban still advocated for restraint. Before they returned to South Africa in April 1927, the ANC had received an invitation to attend the 10th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution of October 1917. Josiah Kumete was elected unopposed as the fourth president general of the ANC at his conference in Bloemfontein, Mangawung, in June 1927. His election to the presidency of the ANC meant that he would lead the ANC delegation to the celebrations in October 1927 to Moscow. However, by the time of his election as president of the ANC, President Kumete and his leadership collective had already unwittingly alienated a significant section of his conservative leaders, particularly the traditional leadership in the ANC. Conservative members did not wish to associate with the communists while the younger members, especially workers, called for more militant action to challenge the union government. Shortly after his election, he appealed for unity within the ranks of the ANC. He was fully aware of the existence of moderate and conservative wings which could dis distract the movement from its historic task of rallying and mobilizing the masses of the oppressed people of South Africa behind a clear program of action to fight for freedom and justice for all. In calling for tolerance of divergence views, President Kumede had fully grasped the political dynamics of a multi-class national liberation movement. He understood the need to submerge the individual interests in difference to greater cause of freedom and justice. The political conditions had changed. During the early 20s, the rapid industrialization in our country resulted in the rise of working class militancy, 
President Kumede realized the need for both unity of the whole organization and the need to infuse militancy in taking the struggle forward. However, political developments of the time and especially the eminent trip to the Soviet Union in October 1927 rendered these appeals for unity of purpose and unity in action impractical for at least the next few years and a decade. The most important turning point for both the ANC and the Communist Party occurred with the meeting of James Lagoma with the Communist International Comintern, including its president, Bukhari. Comintern insisted that the Communist Party had to work for the majority rule in South Africa in the first instance and then aim at the second stage of the socialist revolution. Lagoma returned with a draft resolution defining the Union of South Africa as a British dominion of a colonial type and went on to call for the creation of an independent native South African republic with full equal rights for all races. The seeds had been sown for, has been sown to begin exploring the idea of an alliance between the Communist Party and the ANC. This was to transform the ANC into a revolutionary nationalist organization, laying the foundation of the National Democratic Revolution under the leadership of the African National Congress. Needless to say that the debate that followed resulted in divisions in both ANC and the Communist Party of South Africa at the time. The Black Republic thesis, a new political analysis, also emerged within the ranks of the CPSA, that is the Communist Party of South Africa, in the 1920s, which began to define South Africa as a colonialism of a special type. In terms of this analysis, the Communist Party advanced an analysis which maintained that South Africa was a unique form of colonialism in that both the colonizer and the colonized were sharing the same geographical space. This then made it necessary for all progressive forces to engage simultaneously in both the national and class struggle. This was necessary because the vast majority of the people who happened to be black were suffering national oppression as a race and economic or class exploitation as members of the emerging working class. While this analysis made it possible for the Kumete presidency to forge a close working relationship between the ANC and the Communist Party of South Africa, it further alienated the conservative sections of the ANC leadership, which began 
to rally its forces against President Kumar. In October 1927, President Kumar attended the 10th anniversary celebrations of the Russian Revolution in Moscow. He met the Soviet leader, Joseph Stalin, and taught the Soviet Union. He was impressed by the conditions in Georgia, Stalin's birthplace, and how all people worked together for social development and progress. His positive experiences there led him to label the Soviet Union in his famous speech, quote unquote, I have seen the new Jerusalem. <laughs> Up until then, President Kumete had merely expressed support for an alliance between the national movement and the Communist Party. But they refrained from joining it himself. When the South African Communists formed the League of African Rights in 1929, he joined it and he was elected as president. This drew the attention of the South African police towards him even more than before and further alienated the conservative sections of the ANC leadership. They began to hatch out a plan to oust him from the presidency at the next national conference. He tried unsuccessfully to salvage the situation by purposely distancing himself from the communism during public engagements with government in 1929. However, the tactic backfired. <laughs> Instead of winning the hearts and minds of the conservative sections of the ANC leadership, this approach created more problems for him, as it also alienated him from his communist allies. <laughs> Kumete was outvoted and replaced with Pigs Legai Zagasem as President General at the next elective conference of the ANC in April 1930. It is clear that the Kumete era was far too early for an alliance with the Communist Party to, the, to be accepted within the ranks of the ANC. He was too advanced. It would take more than two decades before the birth of a proper alliance under the leadership of Presidents Chief Albert John Lutuli and Oliver Reginald Tambo from 1952. President Kumete remained politically active within the ranks of the ANC between the loss of his presidency and his death in 1947. He chaired meetings, managed a newspaper, and gave public speeches on the struggle for freedom and justice. President Kumete left a powerful legacy for the ANC. Although he often angered his adversaries within the ranks of the ANC, 
He laid the foundations upon which the alliance would later grow from strength to strength throughout the long period of struggle for human freedom and dignity of the vast majority of the South African population. The solid and unique alliance between the ANC, the South African Communist Party, and the trade union movement has its roots in the change in philosophical outlook brought about by President Kumed. He taught us that the cooperation of all progressive class forces is essential if the ANC is to fulfill its historic task of achieving the national democratic revolution in South Africa. He influenced the transformation of the ANC into a mass-based militant and revolutionary organization which began to win international solidarity. The relationship with the socialist bloc and in particular the Communist Party of South Africa proved critical in the survival of the ANC during his days in exile. He also laid the foundation for deeper political thought, political theory, analysis, and engagement within the movement. Josiah Changana Kumete also remains one of the foremost pioneers of the ANC's commitment to mass mobilization and people-centered programs. The adoption of a militant program of action spearheaded by the ANC Youth League, led by the likes of Walter Sisulu, Anthony Lembede, Oliver Tambo, Nelson Mandela, and others, have all their roots in the activism that was pioneered by a revolutionary that was ahead of his time, President Josiah Kumed. In recognition of the unique contributions of the early presidents and ANC, the ANC conference in December 1943 held in Kimberley bestowed the award of Honorary Life President on Presidents Kumede, Dube, Mahatu, and Mahaban. President Kumede was also a father of Archibald Archi Kumede, who later became a prominent leader of the ANC in the cause of our struggle for liberation. He attended the Congress of the People where the Freedom Charter was adopted and was part of the 1956 treason trial. He later served as one of the three co-presidents of the United Democratic Front. President Kumede died on the 16th November 1946, aged 79 years, and lies buried in Mountain Rise in Peter Marisberg, where he had lived for most of his life. Kumede reminds us today of the old African saying that goes, heroes die, but their good deeds or praises live forever. Putin Zulu. Putin Zulu. Zio Faisen Sizwa. Go to a Zio Salis Bong.
Long live President Josiah Chagana Kumede, one of the outstanding leaders and president of the African National Congress. Thank you very much. Well, that is how we come to the end of this special broadcast. We're coming to you live from the University of KwaZulu-Natal here in Durban, where President Jacob Zuma just paid tribute to the fourth president of the ANC, Josiah Changana Kumede. From us here in Durban, good night.